Hello everyone and welcome to this Crazy Talk 8 video tutorial on how to create quick face fitting from one image or one photograph. So uh, Crazy Talk 8 now has some new advancements. In the past we can always animate 2D animations but now we can work with 3D animations. We can import a photograph both front and side view and create incredibly looking 3D heads um, for us to animate and then export with Crazy Talk 8. So here I have a sample of uh, Roland. So what I wish to do is I want to show you how to do quick, um, quick face fitting with just one image. So let's start. I'm going to control N here to start from scratch. And then we go up to the top toolbar where it says create new actor. So let's click there. And immediately we get prompted. We have the option of creating a traditional 2D head just like in Crazy Talk 7 or a 3D head. Okay. So this is the part where I want to pause and just uh, mention some, 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 uh, some tips. When you work with an image, there are certain things that you need to remember. Number one, you need to make sure that your image, your face, is looking straight at the camera, that your face is not pitching up or pitching down. You need to be uh, aligned with the camera, number one. Number two, make sure that you have absolutely no facial expressions on your face. Do not smile, do not frown, do not create wrinkles, do not open your mouth to show teeth. You need to have a neutral expression. Number three, try to have absolutely no accessories on your face, like sunglasses or reading glasses. And also try to move back any type of hair that you have touching your forehead. I know that sometimes females like to have that style, but when you have hair interfering with the texture of your forehead, you, this will cause problems once we're doing the texturing of your 3D model head. Okay, so on the left side here we have some good examples and we have some bad examples. When, another very important thing to mention is that because in Crazy Talk 8 we now work with high resolution textures for the skin, so you need to make sure that the image that you're importing is a high resolution image that captures all the small little textures from your face, okay, your pores and everything. I recommend to have an image that's at least 2K, 2000K, okay? So let's start then. I can, I can choose here to bring in a front image or a side image. Now in this tutorial, we will not be covering the side image, only the front image. So I have the option of just importing that front image or I can click on some of the sample images that we have. So let me do just, just that. And here we have a collection of some of the default content that comes with Crazy Talk. Okay. So the one I wish to work with is Adrian here, Adrian Front. This is a very nice image. I actually like to work with, with this picture because she has very interesting texture. The color of her skin makes it ideal to show off how you can bring in all this beautiful texture into Crazy Talk 8 and how we can start morphing the face. So let's use Adrian here. And uh, there's another thing I'd like to mention that now you see that I have this, this panel, the import image panel. So if I drag down here in the corner, I can expand this. Now this is very important because later on, it's, uh, since we're working with high resolution images, we might want to zoom in. And that way we can work on all the small details of our face. Now how do I uh, zoom in here? I'm basically scrolling up and scrolling down. Okay? So it's very, very easy. So we're ready. So let's go to next here. And now we're in the front image editing part. Now this is very simple, just like we always had in Crazy Talk um, 7 and in the previous versions. We have to drop in these target points. So just follow the this, um, this image process on the left side, this guide. And down here where it says target point, you can see where you need to place your next point. So right now we're talking about the outer corner of the right eye. Now our subject is Adrian here. So it's her right eye, not ours. So it would be over here and that would be the outer corner of the right eye. Just drop it in there. Let's zoom in a bit. Okay. Then we go to the inner corner of the right eye, just like that. And then inner corner of the left eye and then outer corner. And then we go to the nose tip, right corner of the mouth, right about there, center of the mouth, and then left corner of the mouth. 
Then we go to the outer edge of right cheek. Now here we might be wondering, well, should we put this up here in the center or down here? So the trick is you need to put this point, the outer edge of the cheek, on the the longest width of the face. So imagine there's a parallel parallel line uh, cutting right across Adrian's face on the longest width, and that's where you have to put that point. So I'm guessing right about there. And then imagine the line going all the way to the other side, but not yet, because right now we have to continue working with the right edge of the jaw, just like we have in the illustration here. So for the right edge of the jaw, you can actually touch your own jaw on your face and touch that the bone back here where your, your jaw ends, okay? There's a sharp bone at the very edge. So that's where you want to drop in that right edge. And you can guess approximately where that would be, around there. Then we go to the lower edge of her chin, right about there, and left edge of the jaw. So again, a parallel line cutting right across, and I believe that would be it. And the same thing, a parallel line cutting right over to the edge of that cheek. Then finally, we have to work on the top of the skull. Now here, many times we make the mistake of putting this point too high or too low because our subjects many times they have hair. So it's difficult for us to, to calculate that. So just imagine the skull of the person and imagine the top skull. And that's where you're going to place that last point. Okay? And then finally, if you need to use color correction, correct the levels, the balance, and everything else, you can play with these uh, functions here. But I like the image the way it is, so we don't have to do that right now. So let's go to the next uh, step. And now we're initializing the 3D phase profile part. Now this part is very important. Oh, before I continue, notice that we have already started generating that face. And it looks incredible. I mean, just it's incredible what we can do just with a couple of points. Look what Crazy Talk already did. Okay? Very, very nice. Um, so if you want to rotate here, just left mouse button, and I can move this around. And if I want to zoom, scroll up or scroll down. We also have some other gizmos here to help you out. We have Camera Pan with X hotkey. And we also have camera zoom with the Z hotkey. So when we have our subject, we need to choose um, the gender of our subject, okay? If it's going to be a male or a female. In this case, with Adrian, I'm going to choose female. Now, this is very important to choose the gender because that will determine not just the face profile that we're going to have. Um, but we're gonna the the system will remember the gender, and this will provide you other features in the future based on that gender. So, for example, for male and female, when we're working on the face profiles with a female gender, we will have smoother lines when it comes to the face profile. Later on, we can choose ethnicity, or we can choose a face profile based on some pronounced features like big nose and heavy face, but. When you can f compare all these face profiles with the male ones, you'll notice that the female uh, face profiles are a lot more smoother. They're gentler, not as, as, as sharp as the ones for a male. Okay, that's number one. Number two, once we're finished with the entire head and we click on apply, Crazy Talk will automatically assign a body to our character. This is going to be a bust. Okay, shoulders, neck, and everything. So because we chose a female gender, Crazy Talk will remember and assign a female body to my Adrian character. Another thing is the idle motions. Crazy Talk has the, the idle motions inside that are automatically built to help naturally generate idle motions for your character. So depending on the gender, these idle motions will go accordingly. Um, since it's a female, you're, you're going to have a lot more gentler and softer idle motions. And lastly, this will also affect the type of eyelashes. Once we're playing around with the eyes and you click on the eyelashes on or off, depending if it's male or female, the eyelashes will be different. For female, you'll have longer, curvier eyelashes. Okay? So it's very important to choose, appropriately choose the gender from the beginning. Later on, um, once we have that gender, then we can start with the face profile. I can choose base, with the, which is just a standard base. I can also choose Caucasian. Okay, with with a Caucasian uh, ethnicity, 
we have uh, more pronounced features in front, but we also have a very rounded head, okay? Let me move this. You can see the cheekbones coming up. If I choose African, you will see that the, the, the lips and the nose are more pronounced, okay? And the, the head shape changes a bit. Then I can choose other ethnicities like Malayan. This will give us a flatter face and also change a bit the, the shape of the skull. And the same for Asian, okay? If you notice that w with Asian races, they don't have so, the eyes are not that deep inside the skull. And also a lot of the facial features in front are more flat. Okay, so it's very important to properly choose the initial profile um, that you're going to use from the beginning. Because later on, if you chose the wrong one and then you're trying to tweak things with, with a morph and, you know, trying to move points and everything to get that look just right, it'll sometimes be a bit troublesome. You need to do a lot of tweaking. So with these face profiles, it allows you to quickly set up a base and then continue later on. Um, we also have other profiles, for example, big nose. If your subject originally has a big nose, you can have this as a starter point, and then we could morph it later on. Heavy face. If your subject, um, if you want your subject to have some meat on her bones and on her face, you might want to choose this one. Okay. Short chin. This is ideal for children. If you want to work with a small child, you might want to choose short chin. And then lastly, we have wide chin, which is ideal for when you're creating superheroes. So let's say you want to work on a character that's uh, Dwayne Johnson or even John Cena with a very strong and wide chin. You might want to use this one here. Okay, so let's go back. I'm going to stick with African here for Adrian. And I think that looks great. So now we're ready. I'm going to click on next. And we're going to start initializing the 3D viewer. Okay. So here we have front fitting, side fitting, texture blending, and detail morph. So today we're just going to cover front fitting and part of the, um, I think it's texture blending. I'm not sure. Um, what we'll see as we go along. So the first thing we want to do here is um, I want to show you some of the gizmos that we have. If I wish to pan my 3D viewer, here is my original image and I'm setting up this wireframe for that. And then here we have the 3D viewer. If I wish to pan around, I can use the X hotkey to pan. Okay. If I wish to rotate, I can use the C hotkey. And then I can zoom with Z. I can also scroll up or down in my, with my mouse wheel. Okay. I actually like to use X just to pan around. And if I want to rotate, I can use my right mouse button. I can hold that and then I can drag and this will allow me to rotate. And then if I wish to reset everything, I can always go to home. Okay. Great. So let's start here. On the left side, we're going to begin with the eye right, the right eye. So here we have two modes. We have the point mode, which is basically clicking on a specific point. It turns red, and I could bring this up or down. This is the point mode. And then we have the line mode. How do I activate this? I hover my mouse over the line, and when it turns green, I click on it. And then it turns red. Now we're in the line mode and I'm able to grab this entire facial feature and move it up. Okay. And then if I click outside, I unlock the line mode and I go back to point mode. So let's work on the eyebrow. Okay. That looks pretty good. And then let's work on the eyes. So the eyes is fairly simple. Bring this right down here, the corners of the eye. And there's one important thing I like to mention. Um, when you have the pupil, you see these four points that we have here. These four points, okay? These four points, you want to make sure that they encompass that pupil. That will give you best, the best results. So right about there, that would be okay. Bring that up. Okay, you want to play around with your materials, the materials that you have. So we have those four points. There's another thing I like to show you that uh, you see my mouse cursor here. If I click, 
and I drag over these points, I can select various points. I can let go and I can play with these points specifically. If I want to select the entire thing, just imagine that I have an invisible uh, box and I could box in all these points and that way I can select them. Okay, so that's a little quick tip for you. So let me bring this down just a bit and I think that would work. Great, so now let's do the left eye and we're going to do the same. We're going to go into line mode, bring this up and then into point mode again and work on those beautiful eyebrows. Right about there, great. I can zoom in a bit on both sides if I'd like. And let's do the same for the, those four points for the pupil. Right about there. And I think that looks okay. I might want to bring this down just a tad. Okay, later on we can calibrate the eyes. Actually, I believe we could do this right now just to see how it looks like. Click on eye. Okay, and I could look. Let's look up, down, okay. left, right, and roll the eyes. And then I can also do blinking. Let's close the eyes. And, and you see we have eyes. some segments inside. When she closes her eyes, we have um, some white segment there. So we can fix that up. We can try to zoom in and bring the line just a tad lower. Okay, around there. And we can do the same for the right eye. Okay, so let's continue. Let's go to the nose now. So this is the hardest part, okay? Um, what we want to do is you'll notice that we have our wireframe. And then you'll notice that we have two areas. We have the inner nose and the outer nose. Now this is what we call, this is for morphing. This is the morph area that we're going to use. So if I'm using these points here, I'm using the point mode, okay? The point mode is used for more, um, to, to deform specific facial parts. If I want to completely deform um, parts of the nose and move this to, to the outside and to the inside. And the morph area is when I want to do something more gentler, and I'll show you. First, let me drop in these points for the nose. So let me bring this down. Let me align with the nostril. The nostrils are very, very important. Many times we look at a 3D image and it just doesn't look right. The reason is because people have different types of nostrils. Believe it or not, some people have nostrils that appear to be horizontal from the front view and others that appear to be vertical. So you need to be very careful with that um, when you're creating your 3D um, character. So I think that would be okay. Let me play around with the nostrils here. Something like that would look good. Yeah, I like that. Okay. And then I can rotate Adrian to see what she looks like. Okay. And notice that now I can start working with the center part here, with the center more for the nose. So if I click on that yellow area and I drag up, I can... Um, rotate her no the, no the tip of her nose upwards or I could rotate it downwards. Now this is very important because depending if I go up or down this will show the flares, this will flare up her nostrils. So depending on what the, the original image looks like you might want to bring this down or bring this up a bit. Okay? So I think right about there would be okay. And then we can do the same with the outside nose. I can click on that morph area and I can uh, drag to the right to create a bulge or I could drag to the left to decrease it. Okay, so that depends what you would like to do. So you can rotate your character and then play around with that part until you get it just right. I think that would be okay. Let me go back to home. Okay, maybe tweak this part a bit. Just like that. Great. Now let's go to mouth. So the same idea. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to go to line mode. Drag this down. And then start adjusting my points. 
So notice that Adrian here, she's got very full, rich lips. And let me bring this out and in. It's actually very fun to work on, on lips like this. Beautiful lips. So we have um, both the upper side and I'm sorry, the upper lip and the lower lip. And we they both have morph areas, okay? So the same deal. I could try to uh, hover over that lower lip morph area, click with my left mouse button, and then I could drag up or drag down. So if I drag down, I make them more plump. If I drag up, I reduce some of the volume. So you can just play with that until you feel comfortable on the look of your character. And you can always rotate your character to see what she looks like when you're doing that. Okay? And I can do that for the upper one too. I think I want the upper one to be lowered a bit. Something like that. That would look good. And then I could go back, reset to home. Very nice. So now we can go to face. Now for the face part, one of the important areas is to make sure that we have that top skull point. Remember that I mentioned that that skull can be a bit tricky sometimes. Let me zoom out a bit. Here we go. So many times your 3D char your your character, they're going to have um everyone has a special um shape for their head. So you want to make sure that your head shape is properly um, you know, recreated in your 3D character. So for example, if I would like to make my head uh, smaller, I can go to line mode and I can bring this down. Okay. And likewise, if I would like to make it larger, I can go up and give her an alien looking head like that. Okay. But I think we might want to do it right there. I think that would work. Okay, and I can play around with the forehead also. We have a morph area for the forehead. So I can click, uh, I click and drag. That's not a good view, let's try here. Okay. So you can play with that until you find the right type of forehead for your subject. Okay. Let me go to the hand, the pan tool here. And let's work on the ears. Let me go to the ear side here. So for the ears, uh, let me click on the arrow. I can bring these ears up or bring them down. And I can also do that same for the bottom part. Now, for the most part, I think this looks okay. The only thing I would like to do is tuck her ears in. So you'll notice that we have a morphing section for this. So I just click and drag inwards and I can tuck her ears or I can bring them outwards like that. Pretty cool, huh? So let's me bring this in. And because I'm doing this on both, uh, I'm doing this in, in a morph area, this will actually affect both ears. Uh, this is, okay, let me explain something. When you're working with a morph area, with, a, with the, the, the yellow morph area, this will always be symmetrical. So if I'm working, for example, on this right ear, my left ear will automatically be doing the same. The only mode that is not symmetrical is either the point mode or the line mode, okay? These are used more to, to deform certain areas, and these will not be symmetrical. So you need to do this manually on both right and the left side. So I think my character looks very nice. I like it very much. Um, I can then start working on the cheeks. Now the cheeks can be a bit tricky, okay? So I could always try to grab the inner cheek, the front cheek, and I can bring these cheekbones up or bring them down, okay? That makes a whole lot of difference. And I can also drag to the right to make them very plump or drag to the left to reduce some of that volume. So you have to play around with this if you want proper looking cheeks. And I can do the same for the outer cheeks. Okay, accentuate those cheekbones there. And also raise them or lower them. 
Now, for some of these facial uh, morph areas, sometimes you can click and drag up and down, or you can click and drag left and right. But then other uh, other areas, like the chin part here, you will not be able to, to go uh, up or down. These only go left and right, I believe. So with a little bit of practice, you'll get used to what areas of the face can go up and down, left and right, or just, you know, in one direction. So the last part here, let's work on that chin. Let me zoom in. So I can click on the chin and drag up or down. I see nothing happening, but I can go to the left and to the right. Okay, so what's going to happen here? I believe that I'm going to be making that chin a bit fuller. Okay, lose some volume, and I can add some volume. Okay, and you'll notice that as I am tweaking this, on this side, you'll notice that the lower cheeks are also morphing and following that, that volume. Now, that's very, very cool. Okay, great. And once we're done, we can click on all and we can, you know, tweak anything else that we missed. Um, once we're ready with this part, we can try to calibrate. You can click on calibrate eye. Okay. And uh, you can play with the eyeball depth. I can increase this or decrease this. Okay. I'm not going to play around with this too much. I believe the eyeball depth that we had for zero was okay. Um, so I just want to do calibration. So I can click on the look part here. Let's look. And up, then it's going to look up. Down. Going to look left, down, left, right. and right. And I can do the same for the mouth. Okay. I can click if I want her to say vowels. Let's try some vowels. A, E, I, O. You. Okay, or I can try consonants. Let's, Let's try, try some consonants. consonants. Five. Five. Zebra. Zebra. Punch. Punch. That. Okay, so you can play around with some of these features. Now, so we're ready here. Um, what would I like to do next? I think the next part is where we want to go to texture blending. Okay, give me one second. Let me bring this in a bit. So for texture blending, um, by default, we have three blend types. Let me center this again. Center blending right there. We have three blend types. We have blend um, level one, which will basically uh, be taking some of, those, some of the texture from the interface. I can also choose blend type two. Okay, which will be taking more texture from that face to the side. And then we have blend type level three, which is taking more area of her face textures for the forehead. Okay, I can also choose to turn off the blend type. So the software is using, trying to use as much texture from that front image. Now you'll notice that here on the side, we have a lot of stretching. This is because we are not using a side image, okay? In this tutorial, I mentioned that we're just doing a front image. So we have a lot of stretching of the pixels there because the software is basically trying to take as much pixels from this front image and trying to blend these all the way across the side of the face which actually doesn't look that bad when you when you think about it. Pretty amazing stuff now with Crazy Talk 8. So let's leave blend type 1. And I like level 3. Let's leave it on level 3. Then we can go in and start playing around with the skin color. I can try to adjust the skin color that will blend the rest of her skull and neck with the skin tone from her face. So Crazy Talk by default will try to blend with some of those pixels, but you can always help Crazy Talk out. I can do two things. I can go to color, okay, and let's say if I want to increase that, I can increase, or I can drop that a bit and click on OK. And you'll see that part of the skull now is a bit darker and part of the neck too. Or I can do something smarter. I can go to the color picker here, and I can choose specific pixels. So I want to use this pixel over here, this darker pixel. 
Okay, I can choose lighter pixels. Okay, or let's choose that one there. Or the one on the forehead I like. I think that could work. Okay. Let me choose a darker tone. Let's see. What about that? Nope. So it's a bit of trial and error when you're playing around with this um, until you get it just right. I think I could work with that. And then obviously you can always bring down that tone if you'd like. Okay. I think that looks pretty cool. So now let's go to skin roughness. So in skin roughness, we have both fine and rough. Fine is more for females and rough would be more for males if you want, you know, those pores and, and that skin texture to really appear. So what we want to do here is try to zoom in so you can really see the effect of the, the, the skin roughness. Right now we're on fine, but I can also click rough and you can see that change a bit. Okay, but for female, what we would like to leave this on fine, nice and gentle. And then we can work on the pore size. Now, this is why it's so important for us to have high resolution images when we start. Okay, like I mentioned, at least 2K, because we want to capture all that beautiful texture from your skin. Um, and I'll show you that. Even after you do this, we can actually play around with the pore size. Crazy Talk has this amazing layer for the pore size. So the first thing I like to do is increase the strength of it. Okay, let's see to two. And now pay attention to her, her skin here, to her pores. I'm going to increase this to about two. Okay, I'm not sure if you were able to see some of that. And I can bring this up probably to three or four. And I'm going to bring up the strength. You can see those pores now. Okay. Now it looks a bit rough. And let me show you one other thing. In, in the 3D viewer now, you'll notice that we have eyelashes and we also have the preview resolution. So I can turn the eyelashes on. Okay. Or I can turn these off. Now, because we chose a female gender, she has long curvy eyelashes. So remember, that's very important to choose the gender from the beginning. So let me turn that off. And I want to increase the preview resolution. So if you have a computer with a, um, a fast enough uh, graphics card, then you might want to turn this on because this will make a, a big difference. So let me turn this on. And now look at those pores. That looks amazing. Okay, and I can drop the strength down a bit or even drop the pore size a bit. She's a female, so I want to make her look very delicate. Now look at that. That's very amazing. And I can do bring it back up again just to show you the difference. Okay, see that? So let's go back down, probably to two. And I like that very, very much. And there you go. And that's how easy it is to create a very quick face fitting with one image in Crazy Talk 8, in the new Crazy Talk 8. So later on, we're going to have more tutorials that are going to explain a bit more of the details on how to do side fitting for a side face and also how to do uh, detailed morphs for uh, different facial parts. Okay, but today we're just going to stick to the front side and a bit of texture blending, which we will also cover in the next tutorial. So once we're done here, we can simply click on Apply, and this will apply our head to a 3D character. And I can click on Play, and you can see that character come to life. And because we chose a female gender, then we're going to have those female idle motions, those gentle female idle motions automatically being added to our character. So great, this is the end for this tutorial. We really hope you liked it. Uh, there's one more thing I'd like to mention. That remember that we were working when we were working on all the, the features inside, right? Well, the cool thing about Crazy Talk 8 now is that since we're working on all these features and we're trying to choose the, the texture blending and the pore size, later on when we start working with the detail morph and you start really digging into these values and adding specific numbers, the very cool thing is that once you apply this, your character 
will be carrying those values inside. That 3D head will save those values. So you can save that 3D head in your library. And then, you know, next week you can bring that up and you can continue the same way you were working on that character with the morphs and all the work that you put into it. And then you can try to tweak it a bit more to, let's say, create uh, Adrian's sister or her cousin or her mother or her grandmother. So it's very amazing when you think about it because that 3D head will save all those values that you have and you don't have to start from scratch in your next round of creation. So great. That's it for this tutorial. We hope you enjoyed it and stick around for the next one where we're going to talk about the two, the two face, uh, two image photo fitting about more texture blending and face morphing. So thank you again. Have a good day.